is taken out with a cup, it automatically fills itself back to the right level. This type of simple miracle machine may well have provided the inspiration for Heron's water dispenser. It is hard to imagine today that these silent temple ruins may once have been filled with such magical machinery, performing what looked like miracles to an awestruck audience. These were huge temples, some of the wealthiest and the most splendid in the ancient world. Heron's automatic inventions would have added further to the sheer sense of splendor and awe that any worshipper would have experienced. But Heron had one more money-making device for the temple priests. One which would allow worshippers to think they were talking with the gods, but which was in fact much more dishonest. This is the Omen Machine, the world's first great con job. Heron's most famous mathematical work is Proposition 1.8, which calculates the area of a triangle based on the lengths of its sides. Modern Marvels will continue in a moment. In the ancient world, one of the reasons for going to a temple was to find out what the future might hold. And ancient peoples were happy to pay for a glimpse of things to come. For this, they would consult Heron of Alexandria's omen machine. Someone coming into the temple which was equipped with one of these devices would not, of course, see all the workings. As they walked into the gloom of the interior, they would see just this wheel and a mechanical bird. After paying a suitable fee, they could ask the god a simple yes or no question. Turn the wheel and the bird would either sing or not. The god had spoken. But of course it was not the gods who had made this bird sing, but Heron. Inside the mechanism, a series of cogs, ropes, and pulleys made the bird sing when the wheel was turned. A simple cog attached to the inside of the device could then be disengaged, perhaps by a priest, to silence the bird if the other answer was required. Singing gave one answer, not singing the other. The priest could choose which was most appropriate. It is the oldest mechanical confidence trick in the world. And the wonderful bird song? Just a cup attached to a warbling whistle being lowered into a tank of water. Sound was the key to many of Heron's inventions, from his omen machines to his elaborate windmill-powered musical organ. But getting it all to work together is much harder than it might seem. Richard Windley is an artist and musical instrument maker who has been inspired by Heron's machines, which incorporated sound movement within their design. Richard recreated a mechanical singing bird similar to the ones that once adorned the omen machine. It was an intriguing challenge to see if he could make Heron's bird sing. The drawings of Heron which I discovered and the writings which are sort of fairly descriptive but rather tantalizing give the basic outlines of how he managed to get these things working. This machine uses the siphon mechanism, the same concept which flushes modern toilets. Water is poured into the top 
and when it reaches a certain point, the siphon action sucks out water at high speed. This fast-flowing water pushes the air in the pipes and forces it upwards. It causes a warbling whistle to sing and opens and closes a valve, making the bird's beak move. This is a very simple version with just a single bird, but if we talk about sort of whole flocks of these things, perhaps six or eight or ten of these things all being driven by water pressure, then, you know, the effect would be, would be staggering, particularly to probably a public that were not technologically knowledgeable. And Heron built far more elaborate machines than this. In this strange device, when you lift an apple from a pedestal, a figure of Hercules fires an arrow from a bow toward a dragon. One time when Heron's omen machines were in particular demand was during war, a frequent event in the ancient world. Everyone wanted to ask the gods if they or their loved ones would survive. But Heron could help with more than just omen machines. In Alexandria, he had read treatises by Archimedes, Tisibius, and Dionysius on building war machines. Perhaps he could devise machines that would not just predict the outcome of wars, but would actually help to win them. Heron turned his prodigious mechanical mind to the art of warfare. Heron had automated doors, fountains, and musical boxes. Now he wanted to automate war. Building on the theoretical work of the great Greek mathematicians, he described automatic war machines, stronger, faster, and more fearless than the foot soldiers of the day. A deadly military technology centuries ahead of its time. Alan Wilkins has been using ancient descriptions of war machines to try to rebuild these fearsome devices. This is a Greek catapult, but it is no ordinary weapon. This is the Polybolos, the multi-shooter. It's the first machine gun, and it's over 2,000 years before what is now regarded as the first machine gun, the Victorian Gatling gun. This ingenious weapon had many unique features. It was one of the first uses of a chain mechanism anywhere on Earth. It could fire a bolt further and harder than any man. And most terribly, it could fire bolt after relentless bolt without rest. The Roman army in particular had an interest in such lethal devices. With a huge border to defend, such weapons offered them a distinct advantage. From the Roman perspective, men like Heron could help to hold the empire together. Here on Trajan's column in Rome can be seen an automatic cherubalista, or hand catapult. This machine originated in Alexandria and dates from Heron's day. It may even have been devised by him. Alan Wilkins has built a working model. The device mimics the action of a traditional archer firing arrows, but with much more force. It is a primitive military robot. The main length of the machine represents the outstretched arm of the archer. double-handed cranking system then draws the string back, clamped between two metal hooks. When the arm is fully stretched, these steel fingers then release. 
driving the bolt forward with terrific force. Alexandria, of course, received a tremendous boost. By Hiran's day, it was, a, of course, a Roman province. And the Romans obviously backed this research there. They continue to want to use engineers like Heron because they knew they were the best. Many devastating war machines would have been used in battle, but others were developed as prototypes for future use. Here are these Alexandrian engineers thinking up all these ideas which are a couple of thousand years before they can ever be realized. They didn't allow the limitations of their own technology to limit their ideas. But Heron had more to offer the Alexandrians than just siege engines and miracle machines. He wanted to entertain them and to do that, he chose a place where anything could happen. The theater. Heron describes almost 100 machines and toys in his surviving work, Pneumatica, including a fire engine and a wind organ. Modern Marvels will continue in a moment. It was in the indulgent world of the theatrical arena that Heron knew his genius at creating magical machines could truly be recognized. In ancient times, theater was at the center of many people's lives. It was here that people could join together and discover new ideas and experiences. Theaters such as this vast one at Epidaurus still stand as a testament to their enduring popularity with the people of the classical world. This was as close as the ancients got to cinema, their very own field of dreams. Even the acoustics were precisely scientifically designed like a modern cinema's to heighten the audience's experience. For the classical world, theater was of huge importance and had been for centuries. The audiences flocked in huge numbers to the theater, which in a sense was the, the form of mass communication of the day. There, there were uh, elements of politics, culture, even religion played out before a mass audience. Of course, it was hugely attractive to Heron because he had a ready-made audience, an audience which was conditioned, habituated almost, one might say, to going to the theater and enjoying spectacle entertainments there. Heron knew he could add to this experience. The skills he had learned building war machines and temple illusions could finally be given free reign on a stage where anything was possible. He began by devising theatrical staging with the eerie ability to move on and off stage on its own. This is the first mechanical marvel Heron used to astound the theater audiences of ancient Alexandria. It was built using Heron's original descriptions. It demonstrates how gravity can be used to make a piece of scenery move on and off stage, apparently of its own will. It is the precursor of the modern computerized scenery we see in the West End of London and New York's Broadway today. Oiron has περιγράψει στα βιβλία του μηχανισμούς και αυτόματα που είναι η πιο ανεπτυγμένη τεχνολογία της εποχής του. Περιγράφει κλειστά αυτόματα συστήματα, συστήματα με ανάδραση και αυτόματα θέατρα που παρουσιάζουν ένα ολό, ολόκληρες θεατρικές παραστάσεις. A compartment in the top of the device contains sand and when it was released through a series of holes, it pulled